The next section in our discussion about parallel and perpendicular lines is to talk about the slope of lines. Because obviously when we have lines, we're going to be sloped in some way. When we put them on a coordinate grid, we need to be able to find what that slope is. And obviously, as you found out in Algebra 1 and 2, we can actually find out what the slope of any line is, whether it be out in, in the real world or whatever, so by measuring the height that we're interested in against the length or the run that we're interested in. Basically, we're looking at the difference in the vertical height and the difference in the horizontal measurement to determine slope. So here's the basics. We're going to need a hard, uh, we'll get a little quiz over this and, and go on. Slopes of lines. <clears throat> Slope also means rate of change. If you see the term rate of change, that simply means slope. You're used to seeing this form of the equation, the slope-intercept form, where m equals the slope. And you also are familiar with this equation, where m equals the quantity y2 minus y1 divided by the quantity x2 minus x1, or delta y divided by delta x, where delta represents the change in y. What is the change in y? What is the difference? How far did y change? How far did we go up? Divided by the change in x, or how far did we go across? Now, we have a caveat, or a watch out. x2 cannot equal x1, because if x2 equals x1, this becomes 0. Division by 0 simply doesn't work. Okay, if you have division by 0, Vertical lines have, let's change that to have instead of has. <clears throat> Vertical line has, let's do that, and that will make that right. Vertical line has undefined slope. It's divided by zero. That's the y-axis, okay? Here's an example. Horizontal line has zero slope. That would be the x-axis. So we need to take care of that and make sure that anytime x2 equals x1, we're going to have undefined slope. Why? Because it's going to be straight up and down. I liken it like this to ski slopes. You got green. They're gentle. They look about like this. You got blues. They have a slope of 1. You go down as fast as you go across. And then you have blacks. They're really steep. And then you have undefined because if you go down that thing, you're going to be undefined when you get to the end. They're not going to be enough left of you for them to find. And that's undefined, vertical. Okay? That's how I remember it. Figure out a way if you remember. An example, we have two points. Point A is 2, 1. Point B is 6, 6. We're going to define A as our first point and B as our second point. So therefore, using this equation, we're going to say m equals y of point 2, which is 6, minus the y of point 1, which is 1, divided by the x of point 2, which is 6, minus the x of point 1, which is 2. 6 minus 1 is 5. 6 minus 2 is 4. So the slope of this particular line would be 5 divided by 4. Okay, that would be a little bit greater than 1. Now, non-vertical parallel lines have equal slope. Now, why do we say non-vertical parallel lines? Well, it's because vertical lines have what? Undefined slope. We don't know what vertical parallel lines are. Are they parallel? Do they have equal slope? We don't know because we don't know what their slope is. So we have to put this in here. Non-vertical parallel lines have equal slope. Something you learned in Algebra 1 and Algebra 2 should be very familiar with. Non-vertical perpendicular lines, okay, lines that are not vertical. One of them's not vertical and they're perpendicular. Again, we say non-vertical simply because we don't know what a vertical line slope is. Non-vertical vertical perpendicular lines have opposite reciprocal slope or if we take the slope of of the first line times the slope of the second line, we should get negative 1. Okay, so if we multiply the slope 
of perpendicular lines, we should get negative 1. If you don't, they're not perpendicular. Another one is if M1 equals 2 thirds, 2 over 3, then the slope of M2, if they're perpendicular, will be the opposite, opposite meaning negative, and then reciprocal. We flip it. That's all we have down here. We negate it, then we flip it. So we would take 2 thirds, negate it. If it's negative, we're going to make it positive. If it's positive, we're going to make it negative. And then we flip it over. Okay, we reflect it about that division symbol. That's called the opposite reciprocal. That's all there is about slope. We'll do some samples in, uh, in class and go from there. You should be very familiar with this. This should be a fairly easy topic and um, easy to do.